Warning, read and follow all labels and the owner's manual. In this video, we will be going over your first weld with the Optics handheld laser system. All users must review the user guide in its entirety and be fully trained before using the Optics system. Make sure to review all the safety information in the user guide. Do not operate without both the Miller laser welding helmet and proper laser safety glasses certified for approximately 1070 nanometers. Make sure everyone present during laser operation is also equally protected. Most of us are used to TIG, MIG, or stick welding. But now we are going to talk about laser welding. Laser welding comes with a new set of practices and a different set of muscle memory that you're going to have to learn. Before we start welding, let's talk about the control panel first and how we will dial in the specific task we're going to do. We're going to be welding two pieces of eighth inch thick stainless steel, and we're going to be doing a butt weld. The Optics has factory developed weld programs you can use for easy setup. With every Optics, you're going to get a parameter chart, and the chart shows different materials and thicknesses. As you look to weld different materials and thicknesses, the pre-built Miller weld programs will be identified. In this case, we will be welding stainless steel. Next, we are going to scroll over to 8th inch, and we're going to be using mode A1, or if you are welding with wire, you would use A2. Using the mode indicator, we will scroll to the A series of Miller presets. Before welding, make sure to have on leather gloves, along with the welding jacket. For eye protection, I'm going to be using a pair of 1070 nanometer laser glasses, and these will remain on under the laser welding helmet. The welding helmet is specific to laser welding because it filters the 1070 nanometer range of IR light and is made of carbon fiber. I've got my pieces locked down and ready to weld. Although we are ready to go, keep a couple of things in mind. We're gonna want a really tight fit up without any gap. This may be different from what you're used to with TIG, which you would probably leave about a 16th of an inch gap that you would fill with a filler wire. But with laser welding, you're gonna want a tight fit up. Also with TIG, you're used to going very slow to get that perfect fill inside the gap. With laser welding, you're going to wanna to go faster because what we're trying to do is make sure we're not giving too much time to disperse heat throughout the part. Now I'm gonna do three welds so we can see the difference as I modify my travel speed. One that is too slow, one that is too fast, and one at the proper speed. Let's start with going too slow. Now, let's do too fast. It's a noticeable difference. And the next one is just right. Now that we are finished, let's take a look at the differences. As you can tell, with the first one, we traveled too slow. This resulted in a widened heat affected zone on the sides of the seam. Let's check the back. We got full penetration, which is a good thing, but it's way too hot. You're letting that heat spread out into both pieces, which is gonna to lead to the next effect, deformation. You may be able to see the slight bow down our piece because we went too slow and we put too much heat into the part. Let's take a look at the weld when I went too fast. Our heat affected zone is much smaller in that sense, 
from a cosmetic standpoint, it looks okay. Well, let's check the back. Because we went too fast, it has incomplete penetration. Lastly, this is the weld that we went just right. Minimal heat affected zone, a very nice even bead down the center line of that seam. On the back, we see it's a full penetration weld, not bulging in any areas and minimal deformation of the part. Because our weld was going at the right speed, the heat affected zone was minimal. This is exactly what you're looking for in laser welding. I hope this video has been helpful and good luck with your weld.